Hi everyone, thank you for coming. I'm Ivan. I'm, uh, I'm actually a PhD student in the Geometrics Group at the University of Melbourne. Uh, been three years almost now. Uh, and I'm working on detecting errors in OpenStreetMap. And thereabouts, so because it's a PhD journey, it, it tends to be uh, like change direction from time to time a little bit. But yeah, it's been fun and I'm here to share some of my experiences. Uh, in this research, and I'm supervised by Martin, who we've all seen before, uh, two talks ago, and let's get going. So, why should anyone, anyone care about error detection? Uh, so, there is a lot of data right now in OpenStreetMap, and there's probably the, the amount of data is going to grow. So, now we have over 5 billion nodes in OpenStreetMap, which make up over 600 million ways in OpenStreetMap, and we have just over just under 6 million users. But if you look at the graphics on the right side of the, of the slide, uh, you can see that actually the percentage of users that are registered that are actually contributing in the OpenStreetMap is really low. So right now it's trending around 1%, which means that out of 6 million users, only 1% are actually making edits and contributing to the OpenStreetMap. So if I factor this into the numbers on the left side, I can calculate that each contributing user in OpenStreetMap is actually um, taking care of approximately 11,000 ways in OpenStreetMap. So at 11,000 roads or building outlines or, or, or other features. And that's a lot to take care of. And if you're a contributing user and you are mapping your area or, or, or uh, whichever area you are familiar with, uh, it's hard to notice if anything is wrong with in this amount of data. So to go through all of, the, all of this manually and to, to notice if, if some things need to be updated or corrected or, or et cetera. And uh, I would rather have people who are contributing in the OpenStreetMap focus their time and efforts on correcting errors if we can detect errors automatically and present them with, like, these are the things you should check. And you can actually use your valuable time and resources into correcting these errors and mapping the, uh, making the map right. So how can we automate this process? And can we use machine learning and data mining in uh, detecting errors? I think we can, but there is this one major assumption that has to be made with OpenStreetMap data, because we are OpenStreetMap is now a global data set, and we are very unlikely to go and collect ground truth for all of this data to be able to train our algorithms to be performing well. So we have to make an assumption that majority of the data that's already in the OpenStreetMap is of good enough quality for the users. Because the community is the one making this data and upkeeping this data, so we can just make this assumption that, OK, if there are errors in this data set, they are going to be a minority of the data. So they are going to be kind of outliers. And patterns of the majority of the data can be recognized as desirable trends for all of data. Uh, this is the case study I have been working on uh, for a while, and uh, it, it's uh, the topic. Well, the case study was done on approximately 11,000 bridges in Victoria, and uh, what I was the question I was asking myself is which topological relations do bridges need to have usually have with their surrounding objects. And the reason I focused on topology for bridges is that I've noticed that in the OSM Wiki page where the guideline of how to map a bridge is, uh, they use a textual definition of a bridge, actually. So a user can, contributor can go to OSM Wiki website. They can read what a bridge is. They can see a couple of pictures. And that's what's guiding them in mapping a bridge in the OpenStreetMap. Uh, and in these definitions, I checked with OpenStreetMap definition and Wikipedia, Wikipedia and some other definitions. Uh, there are always some terms that refer to topological relations that a bridge has with other objects. And my idea was, can we learn these topological relations from data? So can we make an analysis on topological relations of bridges with other objects and learn which topological relations an object needs to have with surrounding objects to be a bridge? So. Uh, and now that we learn these trends, can we form constraints on them and use these constraints to detect pot potential errors? So let me explain a bit more. Uh, the way I set up this case study was I downloaded OpenStreetMap data. I set it up in a local PostGIS database on Nectar server. Uh, and for the data mining and machine learning part, I used Orange data mining uh, tool and some Python scripts. 
And the first step in this approach was to pre-select bridges from a database. So this is just a resulting table that, uh, that checks if any, um, so for every linear feature in OpenStreetMap database, it just checks if key bridge equals something is present. Uh, then for each of these bridges, I would find all of the surrounding features, and I would say for each of the surrounding features, calculate the topological relationship between the bridge and the surrounding feature. So that's the last column in the table, is uh, the result of ST-relate function in PostGIS. So it's just an encoding of topological relations. Is the bridge crossing the feature? Is it touching the feature? Is it completely disjoint from a feature? And so on. So every bridge will have for as many to surrounding features, uh, so topological relations. And these are just now the idea of every bridge. And all of the topological relations it has with other features surrounding it. So some bridges you will see they, they only have one or two uh, surrounding features they are related to, and some of them have a lot of surrounding features, so they might be crossing a lot of things, so not just one feature. Uh, so from here on, I have to analyze this data to learn which of these topological relations uh, occur together and frequently, and then I can form my constraint and detect uh, invalid bridges. So the method I've used here is frequent item set mining, and this is just an example. If I have uh, these three different bridge scenarios on the left side, uh, what I'm doing is for each scenario, I'm looking at topological relations a bridge has with surrounding features. So in the first case, a bridge meets a road segment, it crosses a river, and then it meets another road segment on the other side. And I record this in a table. I do the same for the second and third bridge. And from here, I can analyze how often do uh, combinations of these topological relations occur together? So meets occurs in all of the cases, so it has 100% support, while the combination of meets and crosses uh, occurs in only the first two out of three bridges, so the support is 66%. And this is what I do for all bridges in the state of Victoria, and I end up with uh, results similar to this. Uh, so when I have analyzed all of the bridges, uh, the first table shows most frequent item sets for bridges in Victoria. Uh, so almost all of the bridges are meeting another linear feature. So the figure is on the top right. Uh, and then around 80% of them are crossing a linear feature. And almost 80% again uh, have these two together, occurring together. So we can see from the data we have learned that bridge is actually supposed to cross some features, so cross an obstacle and connect things on the other side uh, of, the, of that obstacle. Uh, so what I have done in addition to this is I came up with uh, an extension of a topological model that's also able to express if the, these uh, meeting line, line strings uh, occur on both sides of the bridge, which is the, the bottom picture over there. And when I factored this into, in the results, I came up with a result that 80% or 75% of bridges have uh, topological relations meets line string on both sides and crosses line string occurring together. And if I um, accept this as my topological constraint for bridges in OpenStreetMap, it's, uh, what it means basically is that in Victoria there are two and a half thousand bridges that uh, are missing either one or both of these topological relations and they need to be checked uh, be for being potential errors. Uh, now some examples of these uh, potential errors in Victoria. Uh, on the top we have bridges that are not crossing any features. So the first one is just uh, meeting features on one side. The second one is actually, it looks like a valid bridge, but it's, uh, the obstacle is missing, so it might be incomplete map, and the third case as well. Uh, and on the bottom we have bridges that are missing connection on one uh, side at least. So uh, it, again, it might be that the map is incomplete. So it actually, the feature is there in reality. It's just not mapped. So someone can go and complete the map. And in the last case, uh, the, the issue is actually that the, the thing on the, the path on the right side is not noded where the bridge is connecting to it. So it's a different topological relationship. But that's also an error because in OpenStreetMap, these things actually should be noted so that connection is always made on the node. 
Right, so now a little bit about my more, more, more recent case study that I'm working on currently is uh, I'm analyzing road access for buildings in OpenStreetMap. And again, the idea comes from uh, the fact that buildings are usually made in such a way that they have access from either a road or uh, a path, so pedestrian access. And uh, if I can analyze this and I can answer the question, are there any buildings which are not accessible at all from their closest roads or closest paths? So this might indicate an error that uh, a building is misplaced in a map or that the, po uh, the road or a path is missing from the map. And can this approach be used to detect possible errors? Uh, the approach that I use here sorry, the approach that I use here is uh, actually a, a bigger piece of research I have developed is around uh, the ray intersection model, which is a model used to express topological relations between three spatial objects. And what it does is it defines space between, for example, two spatial objects, for example, A and B. Uh, it defines the space between them by casting rays from one object to another. And then for the third spatial object, in this example O, it tests how O is related to these rays. And by using this analogy, we can make some assumption of is O actually positioned between A and B or not. Uh, but the sweet thing about the ray intersection model that I can use for uh, detecting inaccessible buildings is that uh, it can actually uh, be also used for visibility analysis. So because it's using ray casting, uh, it can find out if there is a ray from, if we look at the bottom pictures, and we assume that A is a building and B is a road that's closest to the building, and other buildings are here shown in the gray, so uh, surrounding buildings. And what I can do is I can analyze if there is a visibility ray existing from building A to the road B, or if the surrounding buildings are actually intercepting all of the visibility rays between these two objects. In that case, A does not have visibility to the closest road, so probably accessibility is also uh, missing. Uh, I have performed this case study on the New Zealand OpenStreetMap data set uh, out of almost 750,000 buildings in New Zealand. 98% uh, of them have the accessibility from their closest road. So this supports this pattern as being like very strong. So most of the buildings are accessible and which leaves around 2% buildings that don't have access or visibility from their closest roads. So that's around 17,000 uh, buildings. And uh, I label these buildings as being potentially erroneous. So they should now be checked by contributors and uh, investigated. These situations should be investigated. So is it the case that building is actually <coughs> uh, tagged incorrectly? Maybe it's not actually a building. Maybe it's a shed or a garage or some sort of building that does not need access. Uh, per se, or uh, maybe there is a missing road or a missing, uh, missing uh, connection in, in the map. Uh, so these cases need evaluation and we need your help. We need the help of the community and contributors in this case. And I worked uh, really, really hard to make an interactive web map that displays all of these errors for New Zealand and displays all the necessary information such as building ID, uh, some description of the building and what is the closest road. And uh, we are organizing a community day activity in a few days where uh, we will host this online uh, and we invite you to come there and, and help us uh, correct some of the errors in OpenStreetMap. So this is actually the, the interface uh, itself. I'm trying to, sorry. So what I do is, uh, if I click here on this building, it says it tells me all the information that I need to know so I can go in OpenStreetMap Editor and actually find out uh, if there is some uh, data missing or not. And I've also incorporated the Google Satellite layer so you can go and actually see that there are some roads here that are missing in the map. So it helps detect quickly what, what the source of the error is. Okay, uh, that's all from me today. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Um, we have some questions. Yep. 
Hi, thank you for that uh, presentation. I'm Nemanja from Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, I have one question. Uh, do you take into account the size of that building, uh, whether if it is garage or uh, shade? So uh, just to be sure that smallest objects, which are not houses, uh, are not uh, falsely recognized as an errors. Yeah, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, actually, I'm not taking this into account as of yet. There are some smaller objects that are frequently occurring as uh, what I would consider false positive er uh, errors, which are they're usually tagged as building, equ building equals shed. And there are also some large buildings which contain other buildings within them. But I'm not really sure that's where I really need the help of the community because uh, I've seen other rules implemented that say that buildings should not be overlaying each other. So I'm not sure how that works in, in OpenStreetMap. But actually, to answer your question, yeah, there are some sheds that should, don't really need access from the road, but I haven't gone that far ex to actually exclude those from the detected errors. Any other questions? Yep. Are there not uh, valid cases where a bridge doesn't cross a feature, such as just steep terrain or a dry gully or something of that sort? Uh, yeah, so the, there, there are some, but actually more of the more cases where bridge is not crossing anything are occurring in, mm -hmm, how can I say this, so in pedestrian bridges. Mm -hmm. So just someone, someone take staircase as bridge equals yes. So I've seen those, but I understand your concern as somewhere in there might be a geographical obstacle that's actually not being mapped in OpenStreetMap. But then that's again open for discussion, and uh, I I think that can then be used. Uh, those kinds of uh, uh, of cases can be used to improve the error detection itself. So we can factor that in along so to improve the, the tool. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you for a very thoughtful and brilliant presentation. Uh, I'm excited for Community Day. I'll be there. Thank you. Uh, my, my, it's not a question. It's more of a, something in addition to what you said. Uh, when It's an experience. I've been tracing. I love islands. I make maps of mm -hmm. islands. So I trace buildings and islands and even the, the piers. So back, back home in the Philippines, even some places in the Pacific. The, the roads, the houses are on stilts. We, mm -hmm. we live on water, uh, above water. And then... And then there are piers or, or boardwalks. So I was, I was trying to trace that, you know, connect the, the houses and said, okay, road and then bridge. It's not there. Uh, I found, I found uh, the boardwalk uh, tag under bridge. Okay. So I think maybe you could consider that. I think it's because, you know, there's, in the Pacific worldview, the, the standards are created from Europe, like mm -hmm. road and bridge. So that's something that you should consider when maybe it extends to other places. Yeah. So it's, it's actually bridge equals boardwalk? Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. that's interesting. Road. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> so it, yeah, so the, 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 that's something I didn't have time to get into, but uh, in, in analyzing the theory behind all of these approaches, uh, we also wanted to see the spatial variability of these approaches. So if you learn something on, let's say, Melbourne or Victoria, can be used in the Philippines. So will it detect errors with the same success rate or will it, will it detect many of the false positives because people take things differently in that locality? So that's another piece of research that would be really interesting to carry out. Just, just a comment from me. Um, <clears throat> I find that uh, Mapa Roulette is really handy for um, if you find a lot of issues and then you want to spread it out for a lot of people to, uh, to, to have a look at. Um, mm -hmm. If you, you can actually go ahead and upload some of these errors and results to Map Roulette, and then the whole community can go and pick out different tasks, and you can actually track how much have been looked at and all that. So have you thought about kind of okay. loading it into Map Roulette? Uh, perfect. No, uh, I wish you had told me that a couple of days ago <laughs> or nights ago, <laughs> because I've actually been setting up the web feature service and, and okay. Geo server and, and lots of stuff. So uh, that sounds easier. Okay. <laughs> Thank yeah, well, you. Okay, thank you.